Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCullough. So, yesterday night was the soft deadline for these Manchester United takeover bids to come in. And those takeover bids are coming in thick and fast. Now, despite the deadline passing, bids can still come in. And if a bid comes in, that's really massive after that deadline. You have no doubt that the Glazers will take it. But we are hearing news of some of these bids already. Yes, the Qatari bid from the Qatar Islamic Bank. That's how it's been fronted has come in for Manchester United and also Ineos, Sergin Ratcliffe's Ineos, have also expectedly bidded as well for the club. Bidded? Bid for the club as well. Now, obviously, there'll be a few other bids that haven't come public um, and there's no need for the Rain Group who are dealing with this sale of Manchester United to make those bids public. There'll be a few more bids out there, but these are the ones that we know about so far and that have made themselves public and that have been leaked through the news as well. We're hearing a lot of talk about the Qatari bid. Now, I know it's saying it's, you know, the Qatar Islamic Bank, and he's just a banker and all this. It's linked to the state. So it's, you know, it's a Qatari bid. Anyway, for Manchester United. And we're hearing of the Ineos bid. Now, I think there's pros and cons to both of these bids. Um, I don't think there's any real perfect solution to all this. I'm delighted that the Glazers are leaving. And if Manchester United are debt-free, um, and allowed to spend the incredible resources that the club generates, then I have no doubt that Manchester United will be a much more successful team. Um, but there are pros and cons to all different owners that are making themselves aware. Now, at the moment, we know, let's go with Serge and Ratcliffe at first. We hear he's made an official bid to complete a takeover of Man United. He's joined uh, the Qatari Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Tani in making a bid for the Premier League club. Before, before today's soft deadline, sources close to the bid say Ratcliffe wants to put Manchester Bank into Manchester United. Uh, sorry, Manchester back into Manchester United Bank. It's funny I say that because he's going to be relying on some loans from banks. Uh, should he take over the club? Ratcliffe is one of Britain's richest men um, and is a boyhood United fan. The investment banking firm Rain Group in charge of the sale uh, set a soft deadline of yesterday night at 10 p.m. Uh, for official interest to be formalised in writing. Um, so at the moment, we know the Ratcliffe and Ineos bid has been made, but there's been a lot of talk about that possibly being propped up by big loans from banks. Now, what they say is they'll, um, th those loans would be going on to the name of Ineos and not Manchester United. But I do feel a little bit uncomfortable about all those things. You also hear Nice fans, you know, a lot of Nice fans complain about the way their club is run and... Any bid with debt is a little bit of a worry to me. Um, that's for sure. Um, and I do think there's definite cons of this. If Sir Jim Ratcliffe, a Manchester United fan, had unlimited resources and there was no need for debt and all that, maybe you look at it and you think, hmm, that's the best bid. But there are cons to that one. And then you look at the Qatar bid that has come in um, from, from Sheikh Jassim, um, as is being reported. Um, now, this is the article from The Athletic. It says the sale of Man United took a significant step forward late on Friday when the Glazer family received a bid from the son of the former Prime Minister of Qatar. There you go. It's already a state link. Um, now, the QIB, which is a Qatar Islamic bank, you know, is, is fundamentally linked to the state as well. Um, I've been reading up on that. So it's clear that this is a state bid for Manchester United. And you will see with other bids, you know, for Newcastle, the Saudi state say that's through PIF, an investment fund. But really, it's the state. Um, and ultimately, you will be state-owned. And let's go on with this article. It says, he's going head-to-head -head with Ineos billionaire Jim Ratcliffe for ownership of the club, although it's possible there are other unknown bidders in addition to them. It is unknown how much shape Jasim, who says he is a lifelong Man United supporter, has offered. And much of the conversation in the coming days and weeks will be about whether the bid is, as he claims, truly independent of the Qatari state. Now, we hear that bid is 4.5 um, to 5 billion for Manchester United from them. There's different reports on that um, online. Um, a statement from the Qatari bank read, Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Tani today confirmed his submission um, of a bid for 100% of Man United Football Club. The bid goes, uh, plans to return the club to its former glories, both on and off the pitch, and above all, will seek to place the fans at the heart of Man United Football Club once more. The bid will be completely debt free. Uh, via Sheikh Jassim's 9-2 Foundation, we will look to invest into the football team's training centre, the stadium and wider infrastructure, the fan experience, communities, the club supports. The vision of the bid is for United to become 
to be renowned for footballing excellence and regarded as the greatest football club in the world. More details of the bid will be released when appropriate, if and when the bid process develops. Now, on paper, that's all the right things to be saying, isn't it? Um, and this is clearly a bid with incredible wealth that from a footballing sense, from a purely footballing sense, would turn Manchester United into the team that they should already be if the Glazers weren't there, absolutely draining the resources out of us. But it will also mean Manchester United return to the top table in terms of pretty much competing for everything, I think. I think that would happen and I think would be a problem for everyone. Now, I tweeted that yesterday and I got a whole load of abuse. What about all the sports washing and that? And listen, just because I think that, it doesn't mean I think that I want United to be state-owned. I personally do not. Now, I know some people don't care, <laughs> like Andy Tate said. Some people don't care. As long as the owners come in and they're willing to spend money and United are debt-free, they're happy with that. And I kind of get that in some sense. But me personally, I've criticised Newcastle, City, PSG, all these different teams for it in the past. I wouldn't want Manchester United to be linked to any state. The Qatari state, the Saudi state, the British state, the United States, any state. The only things that should be state-owned are your health service and your, your railways and all that kind of stuff. Not your football team. So that's, for, that's the kind of stance that I come into it on. But ultimately, the fan opinions and whether you think like me, it's the best thing for, uh, sorry, it's not, uh, you don't want to be state-owned or you think like some other people and it's the best thing to ever happen. Ultimately, those opinions don't matter. The only opinion that matters on these bids is the Glazers and if they're getting enough money and it will ultimately go to the highest bidder. And I think with the resources that they have, because they are quite clearly state-backed, that um, they will be the highest bidder and they will get Manchester United. And as I said, from a purely footballing perspective, that's a problem for everyone. But United shouldn't be state-owned. Anyway, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I know people don't all think like me. That's fine. I'm sick of arguing with people online about it. Oh, Adam, why don't you just stick with the Glazers? How about I just have my opinion? I don't want the Glazers. I don't want to be state-owned. And I see there's problems with pretty much every bid. There's nothing my opinion changes. The Glazers are still going to accept the highest bid that they want. United are still going to have new owners. And all I can hope is that we're debt-free and we compete as a football club. You know what I mean? Because why else can I control? But my opinion is United shouldn't be state-owned. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. Make sure you keep it locked. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And we'll be back soon. See you in a bit.